two men journey to the bars and restaurants of Scandinavia to find amazing beers, always with the same question. Hey, what's on tap? It's time to find out. Okay, what's on tap podcast? And we've been watching a bunch of uh, YouTube videos. Yes, we have. And decided that uh, we're going to forgo our regular beer reviews. Instead, we're going to have Matthias do an extreme beer drinking challenge. So what we've got is we've got 10... Uh, ten point five percent alcohol beers, um, thirty three centiliter cans, and Matias is just going to chug them all in the next uh, twenty minutes. I feel you can do this. I believe in you, and uh, this is going to be a, a wonderful experience for everyone. I uh, thank you for your support and uh, dedication. And uh, you're welcome, sir. I believe in I myself. Mean, I want to thank all the people around me for supporting me in this challenge. Yes. Um, and it's a complete and blatant lie. No, man, come on. No, don't, don't sell yourself short. You're younger than me. You've got the stamina. You can handle this. If any one of us could really uh, tackle this challenge like a, like a boss. It would be you, your it, liver stamina. It is, you, it is you, sir. Well, I mean, I appreciate your confidence in me, but... Look, we have a lot of aboga here for you to drink, and I think that you can, you can handle this. I'm sure I could. <laughs> if only we had some aboga. I know. Uh, actually, <laughs> what we really have is uh, Eternal Darkness from Beer Bibliotech, which is a strapping light. Uh, I would say a session uh, imperial stout coming in at a mere 11 percent alcohol by volume. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a it's a light, uh, easy drinking. Um, everyday kind of beer. Um, effervescent. Effervescent. Uh, really just something you want to break out with the kids um, on the weekend, you know, play <laughs> some kung in the backyard. And then some what? Kung in? Isn't that the... Where you throw the sticks and you knock over the other sticks? Kub. Kub? K-U-B-B. K-U-B-B. Kub. What am Coop. I thinking? I have no idea uh, what you're thinking. Anyway, kub. So you play some kub in the backyard and uh, uh, just, you know, have a, a grand old time. Knock sticks over. Drink beer. Yep. Take sticks, knock over the sticks, and uh, have barbecue. Time. Yep. That's that's the way it goes. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. So what happened was I bought a a bottle of Eternal Darkness in 2016. Yep. It's been sitting in the back of my um, beer closet for a while. Um, I saw that the latest edition had just come out in uh, System Blog, and I thought, you know what? I think it's time to bring out the the old one. The old one and compare it to the new one and see how it's aged over the past uh, two years. Let's see what the difference is. Yeah. Um, so the original one, it was best by, um, yeah, this is the old one and yep. that's the new one. All okay. Right. So uh, 2021. Yep. And the latest edition is good until, um, I saw it somewhere. Bottom of the can? No. Uh, 2023, but I don't know where I saw it. But I know I saw it on the can somewhere. Um, damn it, I know I saw that somewhere. Oh, yeah, here's the bottom of the can. Yeah, yeah uh, 2023. So that's why we know it's two years difference. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So this is number so is it 16 and 18. Yes. Yeah. 126. Um, out of their releases, so they yeah. they number each one of their releases, and this is. Well, I mean, the number... Well, no, I mean, the, the beers. beers. The beers, yeah. not releases, but beers, yeah. So you want to do the new one or the old one first? Um, I'm not sure. I think we do the new one. And the see new we get one first? And then see how it changes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, I think... Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. Sounds like a good plan. Okay, so... All right, new one. Let's just smell them side by side first to see if we notice a, a, right. a, yep. a sure. smell difference. Hmm. Roasty. New one, roasty. Ooh. It's quite different. Ooh. Wow. <laughs> the first one's chocolatey and roasty. And the older one is... The older one almost like smells barrel aged. Yeah. It's a little almost medicinal smelling. Slightly... Slightly metallic. Yeah. Definitely. A huge, huge difference in the smell. And the, but also, it's got like... It's got like the... Really nice, 
like okay, so this is this is this comes back to the celery episode, right? Mm-hmm. So it's it's got that slightly oxidized smell. Definitely, definitely oxidized. I absolutely yeah, yeah. love an imperial stouts. And um, it almost smells like it's a um, almost smells like peaty. I was to say it smells like it was a peat aged yeah. um, beer. Uh, it's like a peat whiskey barrel. Yeah, very very much uh, like that. And the also to note is the 2016 was in a bottle and the 2018 is in a can. Yes. Uh, because they switched to, I think they've completely switched to only cans now. Yeah. Uh, so they don't, they don't don't do bottles anymore. All right. So that is a vast difference in smell. It, it was almost, I would say, two entirely different beers. If I yeah. didn't know better, I would say one was a a peat aged, uh, yeah. uh, barrel aged beer, whereas the newer one is much more roasted and and chocolate. Uh, up that front. is, a, I did not expect that much difference yeah. in these. All right, so do you want to, should we taste the new one? Yeah, I was seeing if there's any notes on the can, but there's nothing to, yeah, nothing to speak of there. I mean, they've got, this, they've got the same name, same number, should be the same recipe. Yeah, no, I was just saying if there was anything that indicate what you should be tasting or, or anything like that, oh. but uh, there's nothing, nothing like that on the can, just a, a Eternal Darkness uh, stout. Okay. Cheers. Cheers. I mean, the taste is pretty much like the smell. Yeah, just a really pleasant, nice, like stout. I mean, all around, great, great tasting stout. I can get. I mean, I can understand having smelled the old one, mm-hmm. and now tasting like the aftertaste of the new one. Mm-hmm. I can kind of get where that peatiness comes from. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, because you get a lot of. Of roastedness yeah. on the front. Um, there's a bit of that peatiness in the back end, but you wouldn't notice it unless you had smelled the one that's from two years ago. Exactly. Which is like really up front on this on the smell. That's so weird. Yeah. All right. Taste the old one? Sure, man. All right. Let's do this. Cheers. Hmm. Wow. Tastes a lot like richer and fuller. Yeah, that is and like, the it it really really tastes like a peat yeah, whiskey barrel aged. I'd say the out. the it's round more rounded, a little chocolatier. Um, definitely a a whiskey peat mm-hmm. aged flavor to it that I did not expect in any way whatsoever. No, that is crazy. That is quite intense. Yeah, I mean I gotta say because I love. I mean, one of my favorite Imperial Stouts is like peat whiskey aged Imperial Stouts. Mm-hmm. The old one is going to win this by far. Okay. But, um, so, I taste the old one again. The aged one. I shouldn't say old, but the aged one. <laughs> like, I think because the carbonation's maybe fallen off a little bit, mm-hmm. it's got a much more rounded. Um, richer fullness to it. Um, I think it makes it, like I said, it's just, it's a completely different beer. Yeah. Like, in ways I just... I did not expect it yeah. to be that different. Yeah, I mean, because we've done, we've had this before where we've tried various uh, age stouts and... I, I mean, there they, was a slight difference. There was but, a slight difference, but this is like two completely different beers. Yeah. That's actually pretty amazing. Yeah, like the the this year's Eternal Darkness almost tastes a little raw and um, yeah. um, aggressive because the cocoa tastes more like raw cocoa. It's not as I said rounded. It's a little more aggressive and harsh, a little more bitter. Um, the roastiness is super upfront, mm-hmm. really kind of almost in your face. Um, yeah. And I mean, the, the H one doesn't have that aggressive roastiness at all. Mm-mm. So the H one is it's almost like an aperitif. Yeah. Like you have with dessert at the end of the night, maybe with a cigar or something, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. 
And I mean, the new one, or the fresh one, is not, it's not bad in any way. Mm-mm. It's still a delicious Imperial Stout, but the aged one is just so much better. <laughs> it really is. I was afraid that because it had such a peaty flavor up front, that the flavors would be completely off. Yeah. Like when you drink it, you're like, oh, that's either going to, this might be garbage because, um, like I don't have like a real cellar. I have it in the coldest part of my house, but it's still somewhat suspect to the, I mean, we've had a really warm summer. Yeah. Um, but it, it hasn't been like just, you know, crazy hot in the, in the apartment or in the, where I keep it. But I mean, this is really aged out just in a beautiful, beautiful way. Yeah. And really kind of what you hope you experience whenever you age out um, something that it transforms into something greater than what it started out with. And this really is like just a magical transformation. It really is. <laughs> I mean, it's it's the perfect follow up to our cellaring episodes, mm-hmm. really, because I mean, this is a prime example of, of what cellaring a beer could do to it. Mm-hmm. And I mean, in this in this example, it it really makes the beer a lot better. Yeah, I mean, at least to my taste preference. No, I I have to agree with you. I'm not a huge um, peat. Um, smoked beer uh, person but I think this is probably one of the best peat <laughs> flavored beers I've ever had it's not even it's not even peat flavor it's not even yeah. peat aged but it's got that that smoky um, mossy you yeah. know flavor to it that just uh, really rounds out the beer in a, a really unique way it's pretty fucking crazy yeah. Like, kind of makes me want to buy a couple more cans and just age them out and see what happens. Just see how see. they see how they go. Because um, after two years, I mean, it's truly become something completely different. The thing I wonder is, will it age the same way in a can? Well, I mean, you remember when we did the Oscar Blues uh, 1050, yeah. right? And we had the, the side-by-side. And we all thought, well... 1050 is not going to age for crap. It's not going to be good after a year. And it was amazing after a year. It was so much better True. than the um, than the fresh one. Than the fresh one. Um, so yeah, I mean, I guess there is something to it. <laughs> Definitely. I mean, and there's apparently still aging potential in a can as well. Yeah. I mean, yeah, get- it's pretty fucking insane. That you can get that like peat whiskey smell and taste from just aging a beer. Yeah. Because I was expecting it to be maybe a little chocolatier, a little more chocolatey kind of flavor to it. Yeah, I was expecting it to be uh, more like The carbonation sweet. to fall off, to be a little sweeter, to, to be smoother. But I mean this, I mean you really don't understand the difference unless you smell it too or you have it. I mean it's... yeah. Yeah, I'm glad I brought these out. Like I said, this was just kind of a thing where uh, it just so happened that like I had this beer in my in my cellar, and I'm like, oh, I need to drink it. It's, it's two years old. Uh, who knows if it's any good? More of kind of a lark thing. And then the new one came out, and I thought it's a perfect chance to try it side by side. Yeah. Uh, I kind of wish we had a, a third beer, the in-between year, to kind of see how it progressed. To see how it would be Yeah. in the like, one-year mark. Like, what is the, tra- what is the transformation point, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, and maybe maybe it doesn't become this beer because it goes from a can, you know, from bottle to a can, and therefore it never, you know, what's it called? Trans, transstantiates. Uh, transstantiates. Isn't that a word? Like like whenever you, um, um, so like in uh, Catholicism, whenever you take the the wafer and it's the uh, the body of Christ, or literally it it becomes the body of Christ whenever you take the wafer into your mouth. And whenever you drink the wine, it literally becomes the blood of Christ whenever you drink it because of trans, uh, trans uh, substantiation. Um, it's a real word. Uh, I'm just making this up. That's, that's the idea behind the um, communion is you're taking the body and the blood of Christ and therefore you're, it sounds you like take a, it into, in, into you, then it becomes, becomes that. It just sounds like a fancy word for transform. 
Uh, well, you know, I don't make up the words. Catholics do. <laughs> you, <laughs> you can blame the Romans. Exactly. Okay, so... Should we rate these? I don't know. Um, yeah, I guess so. Feels like it's a really short episode. I know, right? <laughs> this is our first five minute episode. Maybe not first five minutes, but uh, yeah. It could be. Um, could be. Um, so do you think that there could be more, because of the bottle, there was a possibility of more oxidation? Yes. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah. because the, the cap might let in more uh, oxygen than yeah. a can will. And then I guess the filling process itself, and then the bit exactly. of air left in the top of the of the bottle, yeah, could also cause that to happen. Um, so I mean, there might very well be a, a difference in in aging these uh, if you do it in a can or in a bottle. I mean, I can't imagine letting this sit till twenty twenty one. No, I mean, no. what would what would that be like? I mean, that's that would be kind of crazy. I mean, that's it's a I mean, really should... long time for. A... We should find out for it. Well, we won't be able to now because we've. Well, we're gonna have to get a can and let that sit until twenty twenty three. Yeah, I so. guess we could do that. Um, it's still available at System Belonging, I'm sure. Yeah, probably. Wow, um, this is gonna be hard to rate because. What's weird is, it didn't get into like a lot of times when when stouts age out you get more of like a raisiny um yeah like dates dates and yeah yeah you don't get any of that at all no like that peat flavor just kind of takes you, over and blends with the chocolate and it's almost like you're having uh like an 80 percent bitter chocolate with a peat whiskey yeah it's, that's pretty like, much exactly what it yeah, is yeah it's like it's exactly how i would describe it to people whereas the the new can It's more like coffee and chocolate. Yeah. It's more like... Uh, and that could be what it is. It could be that the coffee is is aging out into a peaty kind of flavor to it. Or maybe the roastiness of the malt and Maybe. The... Because, I mean, there's coffee in this, right? I, I don't know. I don't, I, don't, I don't think so. Um, uh, water, malt, oats, hops, yeast. Yep. That's all it says. So there's no coffee. There's no barrel aging. Nope. It's, I mean, with that fact in hand, it's it's quite an incredible beer from the from the start. Yeah. To be honest. I agree. Because, I mean, the, fr the fresh can actually tastes a lot like coffee and chocolate. It does. It has a huge and coffee chocolate. and chocolate profile to it. And there's no cacao nibs or anything in it nope well hats off to you beer blue tech yeah they are killing it with this eternal darkness so if you got a if you get a chance to get a can of this definitely buy one it is top notch to begin with uh just a solid uh imperial style across the board um but then buy like three or four cans and let one sit for at least two years yeah. because then you're gonna have a completely different experience yeah let it age out over the next uh you know three to five years and you're gonna have a a real peat whiskey party. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be a, a, a definitely interesting time to try them side by side to see how it uh, changes and evolves and matures over over time. Definitely. Wow. Well, that was a interesting fucking experiment. Yeah. So I would give I would I would give this a, a four two five. Uh, the the fresh one. one. Yeah, the fresh one. The uh, twenty eighteen four two five. Yeah. Um, it is great. Um, and I'll be honest with you. I I think I'm going to give the two-year-old a, a five. Oh. I think it is out friggin' standing. Like, it really just hits all those notes. And I can't imagine changing it or adapting it or doing something different to it to make it a better beer at this point. Um, I mean, if it was to age a little longer, I don't know that anything would evolve in it that make it a better beer than it is right now. I 
I'm gonna have to agree. I mean, I might actually one up you on that. I'm, I might actually give the. I mean, the the fact that there's no adjuncts added to mm-hmm. the fresh beer or to this beer in general, and be able to get that flavor out of it, I'm gonna give the fresh one a four point five. Yeah, and I'm right there with you on the H one. It, it's definitely a five out of five beer. Yeah, at that point, I because I mean, getting without any barrel aging or adjuncts or anything, and be able to have that kind of taste and smell and flavor in a beer is mind blowing. Yeah, it's pure artistry at that point. Yeah, I mean, it is just it's like you know, when it comes it comes down to like. Like, you, know, you sometimes hear the argument is how much of brewing is artistry and how much of it is science. Yeah. You know, and I think they've really managed to to blend the artistry and the science together to create yeah. this experience that is just, uh, um, you know, otherworldly almost. It's, it's quite incredible. I don't think I could name any other beer that has given me this experience trying it like aged and fresh side by yeah. side. Yeah, and, and I mean, we've we've tried quite a few. Yeah, I mean, we we, we did the vertical of the K, of the KBS. Yeah, and that was uh, it was interesting. It was interesting, but, but it, was, it was no a, like distinguishable difference that much. Right, it was a, a nuanced difference between yes. one or the other. It was it went from fresher to more rounded, basically. Yeah, uh, same thing with the Oscar uh, the ten fifty. Ten fifty. It yeah. went from uh, like I said, a little raw to a little more. Rounded, basically, but, but this is this is a complete transformation. Yeah, into yeah, something this is else. a completely different beer, a different experience. If you were to blindfold me and feed me both of these beers, I'd be like, okay, this is something completely different from this other thing. Yeah, uh, and that's why I am just kind of a, a little agog uh, at this. It's yeah, it's really something I wish you could share with other people. Like, we need more people here. Like, I'll also try this, so we're not just crazy. I know, right? <laughs> I know, right? This was. This was a fun experiment. Oh yeah, by far. It this is probably the most interesting vertical that I've tried. Yeah, I, I definitely think I'm gonna go online and order a couple more cans of the uh, this year's Eternal Darkness and just put, put them away. Put them away. Yeah, and just see what happens in another couple of years because uh, if it becomes this uh, in the can, uh, wow, that's gonna be a real treat. You're in for a treat. Yeah. Yeah, by far. Wow. Amazing. All right. Well, <laughs> check us online at what's on tap podcast.com. Uh, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Stitcher, Spotify, mm-hmm. and uh, all your regular podcast places. Yep. Um, and thanks for listening. And until next time, keep drinking, you dum dums. <laughs> <laughs>